Welcome to Stoughton Spotlight. I'm your host, Jeffrey Pickett. We'll be interviewing the candidates for the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee as part of our special series, Conversations with the Candidates. I'm pleased to have current Selectman Cynthia Walsh with me on this episode, joining me here. Nice to have you, Cynthia. Thank you for inviting me. And what we'd like to do over the course of the next 30 minutes or so is just to kind of gauge uh, where you stand on some of the issues, find out why you're running for re-election, and just to kind of talk about some of the issues of the day. So uh, let's, get right, let's get started. So uh, why are you running for re-election? Well, I started serving the town in 1969. I was 21, <laughs> and here I am. I never married, never had children of my own. My parents have passed away, and it's a way of giving back. The town gave a lot to me. Uh, if I hadn't won a scholarship when I graduated from Stoughton High School, I wouldn't have gone to college and been the first college graduate in my family. And I came to work for Stoughton in 1969, and either as an employee or a volunteer, I've been here ever since. I'd like to continue that. I think I have a lot to offer. Certainly, an extensive background knowledge of the community, the people in it, and what's happened in the past. What's been tried, what worked, what didn't work. Um, and I, I'd like to see us avoid <coughs> repeating any mistakes. And. I'm not one of those folks that says, oh, Stoughton was so bucolic when I was a child and it was so perfect, it should never change. Uh, I think my family and I have embraced change over the years. My sister was Stoughton's first female detective. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess that's why. It gives me something to do. Heaven <laughs> knows, you wouldn't want me just wandering the roads. <laughs> so you first served as selectman in the 80s and then uh, you're finishing up your second of back-to-back -back terms starting in 2009. Yes. So you're looking for your third consecutive term. Uh, over the last six years, what would you say is your uh, biggest accomplishment or what you're pleased most about uh, your work on the board? Well, when you're a member of a five-person board, uh, you have to get two other people to go along with you. What I hope I've been is the voice of reason and the voice of practicality think that many people don't understand how slowly government works and they expect things to happen very quickly and I've been in it for the long haul so I know it takes a while to make changes. I suppose um, I'm on about nine different town com committees <laughs> and uh, so I've worked with um, SOAR, I've worked with young people, I've worked with a library, I've worked with the schools. Um, as well as the town, um, the golf course. I can't really point to any one sim single thing I've done, uh, but I, I like to think that people respect the fact that I'm speaking for the regular folks, the folks that are having a tough time heating the house, feeding the kids, um, <clears throat> and making a living, and living in Stoughton. You really need two full-time salaries to live in a house in Stoughton and they have to be fairly good paying jobs. You can't just do it all with two minimum wage jobs. And I keep that in mind, that it's not easy. I think some folks think because they've got great ideas that it's simple, but it isn't simple because the great ideas that the selectmen come up with have to be paid for by the taxpayers. And I think I'm the, the person who speaks for those folks. Well, let's, uh, jumping off on that, uh, talk a little bit about the upcoming budget and down the road some of the capital projects that have either been proposed or are being talked about right now. Uh, with that in mind, with what you said with people needing to have maybe two full-time jobs just to make ends meet here in Stoughton, it seems that the, the budget year after year it goes north of the 2.5% increase. Uh, these capital projects are going to cost millions of dollars. How does the town budget this and afford this while not putting it all on the back of the taxpayer? Well, actually, Stoughton's been very fortunate. We've managed to build a firehouse and a council on aging and renovate town hall and build a police station. And so far, our capital projects haven't required uh, Prop 2 and uh, Prop position two and a half override or debt exclusion. Uh, and that's because we've 
come up with plans to save money and put it aside in stabilization funds. And the other thing is that we don't go for um, all the bells and whistles. We just go for what we can afford. And some people might think, well, you should do it right the first time, but we can't afford to do that. I'm, I'm sure there's people in town that would like a bigger kitchen or a second bathroom. It's all baby steps. But even our baby steps have um, improved. Well, we also did the DPW. We've built uh, a, a new playground. Uh, I think um, CPA funds have helped recently. But in the past, we've had managers that were able, and FinComs that were able to tighten up the budget enough so that we can have what we want. It might take longer, and it might not be as big, but that's what I think, that you really have to consider the taxpayer. The budget process this year really got, um, well, how should I say, sidetracked because um, it, it was held up for so long that the, the selectmen really didn't have a chance to have a lot of input. I really think both budgets, the school budget and the town budget, are um, close to 5% increase. That's just not, it's not fair to the public and it's just not necessary. I don't think that some of the departments we have, it seems like we establish a department um, like human resources and then we have one person and now the proposal is to have four people in that office. Uh, I think that's too much too soon and I really don't know why everyone who has an, uh, a town office all of a sudden has to have an assistant. <laughs> I didn't even have an aide in my classroom. I mean, it was me. I was hired to do a job, and I did it to the best of my ability. And could I have used more help and more money and more supplies? You betcha. But I realized where that money was coming from, and it was coming from people like my parents, because I lived, I worked in the town where I lived, and my parents were paying taxes. And so I didn't feel that we should always ask for more and more and more. I'm hoping um, that more people see it my way. I think town meeting is a little more practical because it's such a large body and it's made up of people, um, well, supposed, supposed to be 168 mm -hmm. people, uh, but more people like me that are, are on pension or uh, still working and realize that every penny that goes into some of these projects is one less penny for them. Uh, so I really don't think, uh, when you have a list of capital projects, uh, I think people realize it's a list, but not everything on it is going to happen as soon as we like, and that it's, it took years to get the police station we have now. It took years, and when I say years, the police station we have now, that took over 25 years of, of a certain group of people fighting to have that. And we didn't even have um, a senior center, a standalone senior center, for, for many years. Uh, these are, uh, I think the list is a wish list, and you can start chipping away at it. But anyone who thinks that we're going to do number one this year and number two uh, next year is crazy. And they're not fiscally sound. Well, if we had a, a different form of government, perhaps, and uh, Cynthia Walsh was the sole decider of what was happening in Stoughton, uh, what would your uh, decision be on the high school? That's obviously a big project that's coming up, and uh, the, there's a committee now that's meeting regularly and discussing this. So what's, what's your take on this project? Well, for one thing, I think people don't realize <clears throat> how long the project will take. Um, because a couple of years ago, when they first started talking about it, a woman said, well, my daughter's in second grade. Will she see the new high school? I said, she can wave at it on her way to college. Because this is more like a 10-year uh, process. And the feasibility study is going to take 22 months. And it just started. When you work with the state, and they're going to invest their money in your project, you play by their rules. When it came time to form the, the, the committee to study the high school, they had to vet our choices. And they had specific roles. In the past, if we were having a building committee, we would advertise and interview. But you had, how, how shall I put this, regular folks. 
Uh, but that's not the way the state. They, the state wants an architect. The state wants an engineer. They uh, want some, our superintendent, as well as um, there happens to be another superintendent of schools that lives in Stoughton. He's going, he said he'd be on it. We came up with a list. We sent it into the state. They sent back their comments. Uh, they vetted most of the people that we wanted. And then choosing a project manager. You can't just say, okay. You had to have a proposal for a project manager, and then the state gave us a list of, of I think it was three people that they thought would be good. So um, because we're uh, partnering with the state, and that's, let's face it, there, I don't think there's too many communities that can build a new school without partnering with the state. Um, even Newton partnered with, partnered with the state. Um, then what happens is it takes years Construction, I think they're proposing 18 months to two years, but there, there won't even be a, a brick laid until uh, we get the feasibility study. Now, the feasibility study is supposed to tell us whether we can renovate what we have now or add to it or whether the whole thing has to come down. I'm in favor of adding to the building. I like what they did at Southeastern Regional. One of the issues in Stoughton, the biggest issue on the SOI, which is a <coughs> statement of interest, is we wanted a bigger gym. Well, they built a, humendous, a huge gym that have been, has been added on to Southeastern Regional. They didn't knock down the school, they just added to it. Um, there's also a question about uh, the science labs being up to date. I think that's a renovation. That's not, for instance, if you have a humongous new gym, you can convert the space where the old gym is into state-of-the-art science labs. I don't, anyone who's been in the building, if you sat in the high school auditorium, I don't think you have this idea in your head that it's all come, going to come down on you. I visited the new school in Norwood and the new school at Whitman Hanson. Neither one of those brand new schools has an auditorium as big as the one we have in our present high school. The selectmen also got a letter that when they build the new high school, it will only be built for 1,069 students. They've projected the population, the student population out for the next 20 years, and that's the most students that school will have to hold, according to the state. Now, when the uh, population in Stoughton boomed in the 60s and 70s, that building held 2,500 people. Uh, classes were over 500, and now I think last year's graduating class was 222. People don't have six kids. They don't have seven kids. I went to school with pe people that had 15 siblings <laughs> or 12 siblings. Even when I started teaching, there were families that big in 1969. Um, if you look at the population, the census records, since the 70s, Stoughton hasn't really grown population-wise. And in fact, in the last census, we had shrunk. We used to have over 27,000 people, now it's, it's less. So it's, our community is pretty much built out. In uh, looking at that, with some, there are some developments that have, again, either been proposed or have not come to fruition. There's also, uh, it seems a movement in town to uh, take land for o more open space and of course the town just had a very notable acquisition with Glen Echo a couple of years ago. Uh, what's your take on this? So do you want to see more land for open space or do you feel Stoughton needs to be adding more land to its tax base? According to the master plan meetings that I attended, one out of every five acres in Stoughton is open space. That's 20 percent. Uh, I think that there really isn't much need for much more open space. And what bothers me with all of this open space is it's pretty much unused space. Uh, they talk about walking trails, uh, things like that. But I really think that when people in town meeting um, bought Glen Echo, they thought that there'd be a return to canoeing and swimming. But the proposal is not that, it's, it's strictly walking trails and maybe an exercise trail. Is that what you like to see there is more active recreation? Well, I think that's, they said there would be ball fields, uh, recreation fields. We were told the same thing about the Libby property. Um, we keep being told um, it's going to be open space, but you're going to be able to enjoy it. 
and there are people that enjoy hiking, but um, a lot of children would enjoy something else. Some sort of, um, we have two major playgrounds, one of which was donated to the town um, by the Lesser family, and then we've just rebuilt, or from the ground up, I guess you'd say, the cat playground on Pier Street. But there aren't a lot of play areas. And today's kids need, need more than um, there's a path, follow it. I mean, we're not all Boy Scouts mm -hmm. and Girl Scouts. And the idea that this Ames Pond has active recreation and swimming, and I, w I was hoping that the other end of town would get that. And um, that it would, I'm not saying build a hotel or an inn or anything like that, but a bathhouse and some swimming with, with, a, um, with a lifeguards, some sort of playground for the kids in between uh, dips where they can work off their lunch or whatever. That's what I was hoping for. And um, that doesn't seem to be what's going to happen. In fact, I think they've got parking for maybe six to 12 cars. Now, granted, the people that live on Glen Echo Boulevard don't want to see crowds again. They, the crowds left in the 70s when the, the restaurant burned down. So it's what's, for 40 years, it's been a very bucolic and quiet place. And it's, it seems like whenever we want to have something a little more active, the people in the area are upset about it. There was even active opposition to the Lesser Playground, mm -hmm. which was being donated to the town. There were people that felt that property, uh, we, we don't need parking lot, we don't need traffic. But if you go up there, if that's in your area, they've got the playground and now they have the storybook trail that connects it to another. Bird Street. Yeah. Right. Um, and I remember when Bird Street had a, uh, it had a campground. They had a Girl Scout camp on it. Uh, the buildings were burned down. But um, I really think um, most people in town want to do a little more than walk the dog on all of this open space. Mm -hmm. And I own 10 acres of open space and I pay taxes on it. Um, I think what's happening is the more open space we buy, the more of the tax burden is shifted to people that own property. If 20% of the town is open space, then that means 80% of the town is paying the taxes. Uh, I'm not saying uh, that we should have Glen Echo uh, condominiums or anything, but I am saying that if we're going to buy space, it really should be used for something other than walking trails. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you consider the cost. And we have about 10 minutes left in oh. the program. I know, right? <laughs> Half hour flies flies by. So uh, our, a few questions. Uh, one, uh, you mentioned in a previous answer the budget and uh, spending going up. Are there, is there anything specific in this proposed budget? And of course, it has to go through the Finance Committee still as we tape this and ultimately town meeting. But is there anything that in the budget that you've seen that you would like um, either to make an increase to or decrease to or, or change what is proposed in this budget? Well, I, I think I was the only one that actually made two changes. And one was that um, the money for the hazardous waste days was in um, the Board of Health budget. But they also have a revolving fund that has um, over, I think, $600,000 in it. So um, the rest of the board agreed with me and we moved that cost into the revolving fund. And those are fees that people pay to the Board of Health. It's not taxpayer dollars. But I did uh, vote for an increase. Um, <clears throat> IKEA is dialing back their support of our fireworks. They've been donating for years $15,000, and they've let our committee, community events committee know that they're mm -hmm. dialing that back to 10, mm -hmm. which is, um, as much as that money is, it's really an extremely modest some when you talk about fireworks, fireworks are expensive. Sure. And people in town, that's one of the community events that people really enjoy. People come from other places. And um, one of the other selectmen said you could do a fairly good one with 15, uh, like we've been doing. So I did propose that we increase that budget by $5,000. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's, what is that? I saved the town, uh, the net is I saved the yeah. town $15,000. Right. As I said, we really didn't get into it. We, we heard the presentations, but we really never had a time when we could say, okay, what are we gonna do about this or that? 
Um, we Is that just, something you'd like to see done in future years? And it's been years. done in the past. Right. I mean, the board I was on um, a couple of years ago actually voted a decrease for the school department, too. Um, it bothers me that, and I don't know if, if it's still true, is there was going to be, there were going to be three hires. So money was put in the budget last year. Then they said, well, the school committee said, no, we're not going to hire those three positions or fill those three positions. So, this, so we, um, the finance committee removed that money from their budget. Then they came back and said, oh, we are going to fill those positions, so we need the money. So they were given the money back. And to my knowledge, those positions haven't been filled. It bothers me when uh, people say they're going to do something and it isn't done. And I also would like more information. Years ago, <clears throat> when I was teaching, in the town report, they had every room, every classroom, and how many boys and girls were in each one. So you could see, oh, gee, there's 30 kids in each class. That's mm -hmm. a little much. But now we have classes, and the SOI to the state said the pupil-teacher ratio was 15 to 1. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think anybody wants to go back to 30 and 40 kids, but 15? Uh, I think that's not a realistic number when you're talking about the kind of uh, taxes that people in this town are paying. I really think there should be some consideration. We have the same number of schools that we had 40 years ago with a much smaller school population. And they said they were closing the Jones School, and now it's um, an Pre early childhood center right. with a, a lot fewer children. And we've invested a million dollars in that building to bring it up to code. That building is older than the oldest part of the high school. So uh, I think some folks really should look carefully. I started teaching in, the, in that old part of the Jones School. It's old my father was uh, when he, and he would, if he were still living too, 1920. Mm -hmm. And to me, when they came in and said, we want a million dollars for a new roof and we want a uh, new electrical service and everything, all I could think of is you've closed the building down except for a few offices and special classes and now you're asking for that kind of money. It, it doesn't make sense. Now I'd like to, I'd like to ask, uh, Couple, couple more questions before uh, we hit the end of our show. Uh, <laughs> couple? Yeah, couple. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe uh, we're being uh, ambitious. What are they? Is a lightning round? Right. It's yes. a yes or no? Oh, we, we'll get to that at the end. So, <laughs> oh, uh, end. End. Right. So, uh, the board of selectmen uh, is in charge of evaluating the town manager, and that's not something that's happened recently. Uh, in your, you're just one out of five members. But what's your evaluation of the town managers? job and uh, what he's done so far in Stoughton? I think he's very professional. I, the only thing I, I would say, and it's a, it's a matter of personality, um, and maybe it was because I was a teacher, or I became a teacher because of the person I am, but I'm a very open person. Uh, probably some people say too open, too loud, talks way too much, but I think with our manager, his personality is quieter. And I really think he needs to speak up more and communicate more with the public. I think the public thinks of him as someone uh, in the corner office that's not available, when in fact, I don't want a manager who sits in his office all day, because a lot of the things that we do now, um, we have to coordinate with regional authorities and the MWRA and the state. So you don't want a manager who simply sits in the office and glad hands everybody who knocks on the door. But I also think that um, we need someone um, who's a little more outgoing. But we've had outgoing. What you also need is the brains behind the uh, personality, and I think our manager has it. He certainly has m most of the, the, the skills that you want a manager to have, because he is a manager. And let's face it, it's over $80 million. <laughs> so rather than slapping us all on the back, it's good that we have somebody who's thinking about that money and how to, sp how to best spend it. Do you feel, and this isn't just the town manager, there's a number of department heads that don't live in Stoughton. Uh, do you feel that Stoughton should get back to having a residency requirement for certain 
town department head positions? No, I don't. Um, I grew up with that policy, and I remember um, people having to sell their family homestead in another community to work in Stoughton. Today with the internet, today with all the telecommunications, today with, um, I mean, the manager lives in Canton, except for maybe a few days during the, the height of the blizzard. I can't imagine him not being able to get to Stoughton. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think that's that vital um, that the people come from Stoughton. I think we want the best people. It's not a rinky-dink operation anymore. It's not, well, do you know how to operate the bulldozer? Okay, then you can run public works. There's a lot more involved in it than there ever was before. And a lot of it has to do with money and with the budget. So it's, it's nice if we could uh, get people from Stoughton. And I certainly think that um, if two candidates are equal, the one from Stoughton, I think, really should get preference. Mm. But that's because I was a Stoughton resident and I became a Stoughton teacher. So that's... But no, I don't think, uh, as far as management goes, we, uh, I don't think we should be importing people from Georgia, mm. because New England government is kind of unique in the nation. Right. I have relatives in Oklahoma and California, and they just can't understand this town mm. meeting idea. Right. So it does take, um, it's a different kind of, kind of government, there's a different sensibility. But you're willing to keep it? within the area, not necessarily just within. Yeah, I don't think we need to do nationwide searches. Right. I, I always love that. We do a nationwide search and then we, uh, we did this twice for um, superintendent. Nationwide search and then we hired the football coach. I mean. Hmm. <laughs> so with uh, under a minute to go, real quick, this is gonna be rapid fire. Uh, just the first, first word that comes to your mind. Uh, best spot to relax in Stoughton. My home. <laughs> the best spot to eat in Stoughton. Um, goodness, I eat out a lot. I suppose uh, uh, because it's within walking distance, it would be Chateau. Word, first word that comes to your mind, Stoughton. Home. First word that comes to your mind, the Stoughton Square. Help! <laughs> What's your goal for your biggest goal and priority for the next three years? To make Stoughton as livable as possible, and that means um, economically. I don't want to see people have to leave town because they can't afford to be here anymore. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm Jeffrey Pickett, host of Stoughton Spotlight, and just a last reminder that Election Day is Tuesday, April 7th. Thanks for tuning in.